to start with, uh, your name is Christy. You're here to share your story about what's been going on uh, here in Tillamook County in regards to uh, care for chronic pain patients. Um, I want to thank you for stepping up to uh, share your story. Um, you actually became involved with uh, the Rural Adaptive Solutions because of the situation that was going on. Uh, so where would you like to begin telling your story? Well, <laughs> gee, now you put me on the spot. I'm not sure. What I would like to say, I guess, is that as a pain patient, and going to a doctor here in Tillamook County, I was being treated, and I then one day, out of the blue, received a letter like this in the mail. Well, we all know what happens to us when we get a certified letter. And, of course, yes, it did, scared me to death. Well, and yes, inside the letter, it does say that... Um, it starts out saying, we are writing to uh, notify you that effective immediately, our medical office will be terminating our professional relationship with you as a patient. So, no doctor. Great. What do I do? Now, they is this your primary care? Yes, she was my primary care at the time. Okay. And, and did she also do your pain medication? Yes, she did. Okay. Yes, she was giving me the pain. I, for, my doctor was getting ready to retire. I decided to find a new primary care that right. was there for three months. And right. then I get this in the mail. And um, um, who's who's taking care of you now? I had to go back to my doctor who's retiring. And, yes, we did get the that's, information. That's the Reinhardt he, Clinic. That's the Reinhardt Clinic. Correct. And, correct. Uh, and he is retiring August 31st, I believe. No, July. He's retiring no, maybe August. I'm sorry. No, I think the, it's August. That's the only pain clinic that services the entire county. And, uh, Correct. Um, let's see. The uh, health department is, has dismantled their program. Uh, boy, chronic pain patients have really been left without a lot of options. And, you, you know, uh we're involved in it enough to know the consistency of, of your treatment program uh, is really important. So, and yes. and you, you were looking at some major surgeries coming up too. So, uh, correct. Um, correct. And so, just out of the blue, you received this letter. Uh, did, were you given any reason? The reason was, and I quote, <laughs> it says, we regret that we must make this decision, but necessary due to recent events. We didn't have any recent events. I was just a patient at her clinic. We, did, we didn't have any troubles. And then she recommended that I go back to the Reinhardt Clinic for my pain management program, she states in this letter. So she terminated us. We were out of um, pain management medicine. I was out of my medicine totally. And she decides to drop me as a patient. I was lost. I was without. So for a long-term patient, um, and you know, let's let's be fair. These are not um, easy medications to use. They are dangerous. They are addictive. Nobody's uh, yeah. you know disputing that. Um, but the resources to use these effectively and safely 
the carpet was just pulled out from under us, the way I see it. Uh, totally. And totally. it seems I to, to go. Go ahead. I had to go a half of a month without my medication, and I have arth- severe arthritis in both knees. I could not walk. I yeah. could not get up to my bedroom, up my stairs in my house to my bedroom. I could not walk at all. So I, with the pain management medicine, I was able to get upstairs um, for a little bit, a little while. And you were then basically my, bedridden. Totally. And, I actually uh, was recliner ridden <laughs> because I had to sleep downstairs in my recliner for over seven months. That my... My my arthritis is so serious. I mean, it came on very quickly, and happened uh, just boom. That, so uh, it, it, it took seven months, but you're still not in what you would consider a comfortable long-term program. Oh, my program is no. My program in August is over. Okay, and. Uh, um, how do you feel about the alternatives that have been presented? Uh, uh, because it seems to be like Adventist Health just seems to be taking over uh, health care in the county, uh, except for a few. Uh, well, I don't know of any alternatives. Uh, I know there that, isn't uh, any, really. We're stuck. In Tilma County, what, what the doctor who's retiring did to us for us at the Reinhardt Clinic is give us a whole list, starting alphabetically with every pain management program in the state of Oregon, from Medford to Seattle, Washington, even. So we're including Washington State. Um, so they gave us options, but Albany is one from my location to Albany is not a great job, especially when you are in pain. You have to realize that this pain prevents you from riding in a car. It's, um, it's debilitating. Well, I know the, the seminars that they've been having around the county are, uh, two to four hours long, and that's the biggest uh, complaint I've heard, is the patient cannot sit that long. Um, Correct. And, and uh, you've gotten involved now uh, in trying to create primary care alternatives here within the county. And uh, yes. I think that's pretty much the motive for you being on camera and sharing your story. Uh, exactly. Uh, one of the things that uh, I know you've gotten involved with is starting a women's support group, uh, yes. which is something that I think is really important, the mental health aspect. Uh, you know, it's just it's hard enough dealing with the limitations of chronic pain. Um, the mental health portion has been real important. Uh, why... When we're supposed to have contracted services, did you ladies have to start this on your own? The pain management support group? Is that your question? Right. I mean, why did you have to start it uh, yourselves? It seems to me that would be a natural uh, service for uh, Tillamook Family Counseling and any other yeah. uh contracted service as a matter of fact they deliberately uh, excluded chronic pain patients from uh, group therapy any of their group right. programs uh, so you really had no alternative but to start out on your no, own correct correct and we're small right now but we're losing another um Counselor in our area up up north. She will be gone in July, and 
So now we're short. How many of her patients she has been providing? Oh, um, I think you can share her name because th- that's uh, uh, Malar, isn't it? Who's Malar. Yeah. Oh boy, yeah. that's going to leave a real She's vacuum. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, yes. You know, yes. uh, I've advocated for a number of her patients, and she's just incredible. Oh, incredible. Incredible. And a lot of our group will come from her patients when she's gone. That's when our group will grow, yeah, because everybody's going to be at a loss. Um, so, they are providing that service up there with a – with. They are going to provide a counselor, and but Malar, replacing Malar um, isn't going to be the same. So the support group is going to help us adjust to the changes. Number one, because with with uh, um, anxieties, panic attacks that I suffer from, also changes is not good. Yeah, people don't understand, number one, about anxiety or panic attacks or depression or fibromyalgia. So we've taken all those and we're putting them in one body, and change is not good here. And a lot of our um, group suffers the same symptoms, the same everything that we can help each other. We're all in different stages of this um, cycle that some of us are uh, in bed. Some of us has made it through the transition, so they're at the next step. Some of us have gone seven years now and are able to help those newer newcomers to the program. So if no matter what state you are in, if you are in anywhere with these um, diseases, uh, there's support for you. We are providing that service with uh, the Rural uh, Adaptive Solutions Support Group. It's a it's a grassroots effort. Um, you know, so, yes. we're going to be sharing these videos with uh, uh, Senator Wyden, Senator Merkley, uh, you know, our elected officials. Um, what's the one message that you want to make clear to them? Uh, yeah, what what, <laughs> what would you like to say? My though? message. My yeah. message would be uh, one word, and that is help. Help, please. And There's, I hope they listen to the patients because that's the last person they're listening to. We've been excluded from the process totally, I think. Totally. They're making decisions. People are making decisions about our illnesses. They have never been through they don't understand. We need help, please. They don't have the um, qualifications. And they don't have the qualifications to make medical decisions pertaining to us when they have never been through. Uh, you know, how can you explain chemotherapy for cancer patients and make a decision on whether they should get so and so amount of a particular some chemo? Uh, chemo treatment uh and then and then take it away from them and without mean, seeing on. the patient without seeing the patient Correct. you know please so please take the patient into consideration and please step up and help us we well, we aren't a big county but we are we are <laughs> well with people like you we're going to keep on trucking and i really appreciate the interview and i appreciate you sharing your story because i know it's not easy and uh well we'll see you soon we'll see you saturday okay thank you Jeffrey. <laughs> thank uh-huh. you bye-bye 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 um okay jay uh I really appreciate you uh, 
uh, sharing your story on uh, camera with us. And I uh, want you to just relax. Uh, I'm going to give everybody a bit of a background, and uh, then you can add and uh, take it from there. But you were dealing with some physical issues and mental health issues. Um, you had gotten a pretty balanced program uh, organized under the care of Dr. John Zimmerman. Um, and uh, why don't you just take it from there? Um, oh. Oh, sorry. Started to spasm a little. Okay. Uh, Dr. Zimmer, Zimmerman at the health department was uh, handling my pain management, and uh, Malar Moore was uh, handling my um, other medications. And uh, when Dr. Zimmerman left, the health department advised me, or advised me that Dr. Betlinski would be taking over for a temporary period of time until a new provider was hired. I saw Dr. Betlinski for probably about um, nine, ten months, and there was no indication from him there was any concern about medications. And um, the last visit I had with him, um, they had contacted me and told me I needed to come in and see him as uh, yeah. uh, as a visit for um, information for this new pain committee that they had. Um, and I went in to see him, and he said that he felt that my medications uh, that I was on at that time was ad adequate and should stay the same. There was some concern with the benzodiazepam I was on, but because of the low amount I was taking, he felt that it should be fine and that he would uh, further those recommendations to the pain committee, and uh, there shouldn't be any problems with that. Now, you were also under the care uh, uh, and regularly seen a, a mental health therapist uh, who was working with Dr. Zimmerman on your program, correct? I, I don't believe uh, that Patty Blondo is the, mental, the therapist. I don't know that she yeah, ever spoke I, I was with, referring uh, to Dr. Nikki Zimmerman. and uh, oh, Tillamook, Nikki, yes. Nikki, Tillamook yes. Family Nikki Counseling. Did. Yes, she did talk with Dr. Zimmerman. Uh, and so um, you had a pretty good balance program, is what I'm trying to get at. Yes, yes, it was. I was fine. I was doing good. I was getting better after I'd um, had my um, the episode where I'd had to find it, had to stop work. I was improving, and after my visit with Dr. Betlinski, I received another. Uh, call from the health department that I had to come in for another visit with a different provider, which turned out to be a nurse. Oh, oh and she asked me I could choose which one I wanted. between, And I said that I liked Dr. Zimmerman's personality, so she said she would put me with this um, uh, nurse practitioner that was there, a uh, new nurse practitioner. So I saw... Well, I can't that, think of his name now. That's I that's not really name. important. Uh, the point and, is, uh, is 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 you've got what sounds to me like unqualified people starting to make changes to your case uh, and treatment plan. Well, and I had to, what was strange to me is that I had to be called in for a second visit for the exact same thing that I was told I had already seen Doctor Betlinski for. The and second he recommended visit, with, no, visit with the nurse practitioner was for the same thing that I had just seen Dr. Betlinski for. Well, and this is 
pretty much in line. Uh, basically, they just wanted you to reduce your pain meds. Is well, that at that the, time, he at that time he did not say anything to me about reducing my pain meds when I no, saw I mean the committee. The committee. I heard nothing from the committee about reducing pain meds at that time. I spoke with the nurse practitioner. I saw him. I told him about my visit with Dr. Betlinski. Uh, we talked about the concern about taking pain medication with the benzodiazepines. I offered to him um, that I would be willing to uh, reduce um, I have a plan of reducing the benzodiazepines so that that would not be a problem or in conflict conflict with the pain medication. And he said we could talk about that after we received back the recommendation from the pain committee. Now, did you um, ever see anybody the, on this committee? No, never saw anybody from the committee. Were you ever Next told thing, who they were? No. And they just uh, the thing, go ahead. Uh, and the next thing I hear is, I think about a, a week or so later, I, I heard from the medical assistant called me and told me that uh, the health department wanted Malar Moore, who is the person who has been, she's a psychiatric nurse practitioner at Reinhardt Clinic, and who has been handling my other medications for a period of years, they wanted her to begin handling my pain medication. That was what the committee had decided. And I said that she, I didn't believe she was able to do that. That was not within her purview at uh, Reinhardt Clinic. I did check into that with the clinic, and I was right. That was not within her purview, and I advised... Um, well, and on the top of that, she's system. leaving now, too. So, Yes, she's leaving now, but at that time, I advised medical assistant she couldn't do that. And each time I called for a prescription, I advised the medical assistant that she was not able to take over the pain medications, and I didn't know what I was to do because he was starting, the nurse practitioner was starting to give me less pain medication, and I didn't know why. I was never told they were going to reduce my pain medication. And this has left told. you pretty much, again, uh, uh, close to bedridden. Uh, oh, yes. What so. ended up happening is he, he reduced the pain medication, and he did it without any consideration or in, uh, of the impact of what that would have to do on uh, my mental health status or how, you know how that would work with my mental health status and... What that did was limit my ability to be able to function, and in limiting my ability to function, that impacts my um, my mental health. And your quality of life. Function, my quality of life. Then I, I feel I'm of not of value, and it it's very difficult to to uh, yeah have any quality of life when you feel like you you don't have. A, you're not able to function. So I ended up probably for two and a half months being almost completely bedridden because of the depression from just seeing a future of, of, of no future of being able to function. And they would not listen to me. You I were answer essentially my cut out of the process. Right, and they wouldn't answer my questions as to why they were reducing the medication. Yeah. I never did hear. Until so, what would you like to uh, ask the senator? It, what would you like them to get out of this uh, yes. um, interview with you? Uh, I would like the senator to, to understand and, and, and to let, I guess, the federal agencies know that that when they start to look at the um, programs and the rules having to do with control of uh, medications, that there really are people behind these medications. You know, uh, I know they like to look at it as it's the, uh, you know, and identify and uh, 
I can't think of the word, uh, stereotype, the person who uses these medications. But it's not always those people. They're real people, you know, such as ourselves, who are who are just trying to function and, and be a good citizen and be a good grandmother and We're friend. We're not criminals. Partner. We're not criminals. No. We're not second-class citizens. These are medications that, uh, you know, I think everybody acknowledges they're dangerous. Uh, but education is a key part of that. And, uh, you know, I think you've helped educate a lot of people today. And I want to thank you for uh, um, being available and uh, sharing with us. So best of luck. Thank you. Thank you very much.